Sue here from Sue's Dog Rob My Garden today. It is the 9th. Is it the 9th? I think it's the 9th of September today. Anyway, I've just come out into the polytunnel. I've got a little bit of drizzle going on, not much outside. Really warm still. Um, and I just want to show you the polytunnel quick because I haven't actually looked at it this week myself very much. I'm just looking around now and I can see that I need to do a few things. <clears throat> and I just want to show you the experiment that I'm doing outside with the um, beer traps and stuff for my brassicas. Um, yeah, so we're going to do that and I just want to show you the seeds I sowed the other day. See if they're coming up, I haven't even looked yet. But I'm also going to sow some more rocket today. Is there any in this packet? Oh, there's none in this packet. I brought this packet out and there's nothing in it. I'll have to go back and get a packet that has got some rocket in it. Because uh, my partner really likes rocket and um, he keeps asking me. I keep telling him I haven't got any control over whether it grows or not once I put it in. But <laughs> I've put rocket in. I can see it here. Yeah, look, it's here. Rocket's here. But it takes a while to get going. So hopefully it'll start growing again soon because it seemed to have got too warm. I've got loads of rocket. I don't need to sow any. I've got some on the table here. There's some, but it looks a bit dry. I'll have to get that water. Oh, I better keep an eye on these seeds that I put in because it was really, really, really hot the other day when I sowed them. And now it's gone quite cool again and the tops of the soil have gone a bit hard so I better um, I better give them a quick water to make sure that they because the seeds are at the very top they haven't gone to the bottom yet and I've got to put in a few more brassicas in the garden um, I've still got some in here that need to go outside so we're gonna so I'm helping my partner do the the wood pile that we're creating around the other side um, to, to sort of sort out the areas of the garden that we've never worked on um, like the piles of wood that we got so I'll go and give you a rundown of that I did put it in a previous video which I didn't finish um, so this is like part two of that video because it just go over into this video and I didn't quite finish that one so I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of what's going on in polytunnel and then we'll quickly go and look at what we're creating in the garden actually I might do it the other way around we'll go and look at what we're creating in the garden first another area of the garden that we're um we've now finished in this top area of the garden as I showed you on a previous video this is all done with my grandsons when they were here on holiday um, and now we've, we've moved over to the other side near where the stable block is and we've been doing the doors on the stables and we're now clearing the area next to the stables, clearing the wood and we're trying to, we're going to make a new uh, log hut thing to put all the wood in to protect it from the weather and we're just basically moving around the garden because um, there's a lot of different areas in this garden so we need to there's a lot of work to do so I'm just gonna go over it's a bit spitty go over to the new bit of the garden not new bit none of the gardens new <laughs> to the other bit so just let us go over this way and I hope you saw my other video with my butterflies um, but now we're in this bit of the garden. I'll just turn the camera around so you can see what we've been up to. Okay, everyone. So if you could see on the previous bit of video, we have now started on this side of the garden. So yesterday we cleared all this bit up here. And at the back there, see that? That's my garden that I've just come out of where the polytunnel is. And now we're coming down the hill kind of thing. And this is where we're going to put a new wood shed thing that we're going to make and put all our wood in here well not all of it this would be one wood shed this end and then there's all this wood which will go in another wood shed the other end so we cleared all this bit 
So we've moved all this wood. We've still got to move all this wood. Uh, and then we'll move all this mud out. Might put that in my bag because that looks like I could use it. And we found this, we're not sure if it's small bees or wasps, but these wasps, if these are wasps, they're not very nasty. There's millions of, they just keep flying in. And they're, luckily, when we found them yesterday, we didn't um, disturb this bit. We disturbed all this bit round next to it and in front of it, but we didn't disturb it. I told Simon I could hear some buzzing yesterday when we were clearing this bit over here where this big tree is. If I show you this big tree here, and then we got this wall that's grown, well, the tree's grown through the wall. But when we were clearing this bit yesterday, I could hear buzzing and I kept saying to Simon, I can hear buzzing, but obviously it's coming from over here. So we're just leaving that. We're not disturbing that. So we're not sure if they're small bees or small wasps. They're not like normal wasps, if they are wasps. They're really, really tiny. So we think they might be native wasps, if they are, but they're, they're very unthreatening. And back here was where we were gonna put the other wood store. So we're putting one wood store on this side, one wood store on the other side, and then we're gonna create another wood store. So we wanna move it away from the building here, see? Because it encourages vermin in the winter. And then they run under the door here and get into the stable block. So we wanna get rid of all this wood away from this building. So we're gonna put most of it over this side. So all this wood is gonna go over this side. And then in the other part of the garden over here, which I showed you before, um, we're going to create another wood store in this part of the garden at the back here because we've got another load of wood. Um, there's a load of wood here. Well, we've got so much wood and a load of wood there. This is over several years because we've lived here quite a few years now and we've had to have several trees taken out because they, a couple fell down. Well, one fell down. Uh, we had to have about five taken out. Hello. Hello. What have we been up to, eh? Hello. So Anu's coming to see what I'm been up to. Aren't you, Anu? He's like, what are they doing? They're always doing stuff. I just chill out all day long, walking about. And we've created a step here now, which is much better because we had a big dip. Because look, it slants upwards, everything's hilly here. Hello, baby. Hello, Anu. Here's my puppy, Anu. My puppy, Anu. My puppy, Anu. Yeah. Mm. The most pampered sheep, aren't you, Anu? Aren't you, Anu? Mummy loves you. So, anyway, I just wanted to show you that. So now we're going to show you what's going on in the polytunnel today and our experiment round the other side with the old um, brassicas trying to save them from the slugs. Okay, so I'm back round to where the polytunnel is and we're going to look at our brassicas. Uh, so, <laughs> the experiments. So inside there, I think some water's got in there now though. Um, We've got a few slugs, but look at this. These are still getting eaten. I did see, oh no, where's it gone? Oh, where's it gone? I saw on one of these bottlenecks, inside the tube bit, there was a slug. I think it was this one. So the tube bits are actually, you're getting slugs inside them. Oh, I did come back to kill it, but um, it's gone, got away. But these are still getting eaten. So, that's the experiment one with the bottles and the beer. But we did get a few, a few of the um, slugs, but not enough. In here, oh look at there's a great big slug in there in that beer trap two big slugs in there 
So in this one, they're still getting a bit nibbled. That one at the back is well nibbled. It's starting to rain now. And that one there is not looking too good. But I'll leave them. But this one's not looking too bad. But this one we've got a beer trap, eggshells and plastic bottles. So, hmm. In this one, it's just shells. We've got a few couple of slugs in the old beer trap but these ones don't look too bad I'm thinking and these are without the plastic hmm uh, and that continues over to here these ones have got plastic on and a beer trap you can't really see them ones over here these ones have got plastic see some of these seem to be perfectly all right and beer traps these ones as we're going along here they're looking better as you can see look uh, yeah these ones with nothing on seem to be all right don't know if the beer the actual plastic is encouraging the slugs myself i'm not sure because some of these haven't got any they've just got the echinaceous earth around the base of them hmm Oh yeah, so what I did was, on these ones over here, no, not Erignaceous Surf, Di, oh, Dionaceous Surf, oh, I can never remember what it's called. The stuff with the mollus mollusks in it, the tiny sea creatures. But these ones, I put some underneath the eggshells. So, but it's got like, it sort of cuts the, sna the slugs and snails, so... I'm thinking maybe that's the way to go because if you look at these ones without the plastic and just the 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 um, earth round they seem to be faring a lot better as are these ones see not too bad on these ones at the end here so I think we've got one slug in there, a tiny one. But if you look, some of these are okay. So, and some are fine. So what we'll do is we'll just use some more of the earth stuff around the new plants I'm going to put in. Because I've got to put in a few more now. Take out some of the ones that have been eaten and replace them with more. Oh my God, will I ever have any left at this rate? Or just fill in the spaces... I've got a few spaces in here, so I might just fill in the spaces with the new plants, put the earth round, and then just hope to God they don't get eaten. I think that's what we're going to do. Anyway, I just wanted you to have a look at these. Um, sorry, I'm swinging this round. These gladioli are done now, sadly, but we do have these little ones that have come out. Look at these ones. Oh, look at these, and this little... Hoverfly likes them as well. Look at them. So these are smaller. And there's some more this side. Aren't they absolutely stunningly beautiful? And then we've got a big gladioli here. Pink one again. Oh, I love these plants. But that one, them two there have died off now. And these little, whatever they're called, brush plants, they're, they're going over now. Um, yeah, so we've still got a few coming. Oh, it's gone really chilly all of a sudden. Ooh. The um, coleus seem to be going to flower. See that? I'm going to get some flowers on the coleus. And then I think these will nearly all be done. I haven't seen any flowers on the aquilegia yet. It's still growing. And I haven't seen anything ha Oh, poor little thing's fallen over, look. Oh, oh, it's on its last flower head. It's starting to rain. <laughs> oh, we wanted to work outside today. It'll be all right if it's only a little bit of rain. I quite like it. It's quite refreshing after such dry weather we've had for a long, long time. We've had really dry weather. So a bit of rain is good. And it shows me on these beds which parts of them are going to get um, water. But at the moment they're looking all right. I did water them. 
I did try and cut back all the overhanging branches of the bushes that are around them. Uh, what's going on in our pond today? Mm, can we see anything? I'll put a couple of shells in there now that we found in the garden. Oh, I love this bit. Oh, do you like my little owl? Made out of shells. Very tacky, I know. I don't care. I want tacky things in my garden. I've never had a tacky garden, so this is great. Anyway, so it's looking good. So anyway, let's do a tour of the polytunnel. We don't want to make the video too long. Back okay. The polytunnel now. Just show you my shell collection again. There they all are. Everything's looking good round here. Still looking pretty healthy. All my, um, yeah, these things. They're all looking good. I think that's a bramble in there. I might have to try and grab that. Oh, I don't know. I better check it out first. Yep, so I haven't really examined the garden or the inside the polytunnel. So we'll have a quick look in here. So now you can hear the rain. It's only a raining a little bit, so we need to fill up our beer things in here. Ah, oh, that's what I'm going to do today. So I need to do some harvesting today. So I might take out a couple of these these cabbages here because this one here doesn't look very happy mm. and I think there's one back there I'm not sure what's happening with the melons there I might need to rescue them from the rhubarb which I'm going to harvest today so I'm going to harvest the rhubarb today take some more tomatoes not many on this one oh yeah I just showed you I need to water my seeds that I put in the other day so I put in winter radish some pansies called white lady they're winter pansies um, some winter green salad mix and some savoy cabbage January King free so we're going to plant all those we've still got some more brassicas to put out there's the odd one here and there so we're just going to put them out these are my parsnips which I didn't think we're going to grow, so we just put them in the polytunnel somewhere. Some more brassicas, I think this is purple sprout and broccoli. Um, we need to sort out this bed today and check out what's going on with the melons. I'm not sure if they're going to grow. Um, I think some of the cucumber plants are going over, like this one here seems to be going over, and I can't see any cucumbers. Oh yeah, there's two at the top. Oh, I might leave those two and then I think this cucumber melon plant will be done we've got a couple more cucumbers here and here but then I think I'm going to start taking out the cucumber plants and the ones with no cucumbers on like this one I think it's got none on I don't know if it's got any on it it's got a lot of flowers on it at the end here. I don't know if they've come to anything now, though. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. This tomato plant is huge, gone all the way up here. <laughs> and it's got some tomatoes down here, but only a few. Um, oh, we've got some cucumbers on this plant. There's some cucumbers. I think we've got two on this one. So I think we've done quite well. We've got more cucumbers on this one. There's some more. Uh, I think there's two on here somewhere. Um, yeah, so we'll leave them for now. The sweet peas are definitely going over. And what I do is just tidy them up because they're actually acting as a frame for the tomatoes and the French beans. So they are actually serving a purpose. The physalis are still really getting big. Uh, getting really tall now. Look, they're really, really tall. They've overtaken the fig and they're getting really big. So what I'm going to do with the physalis is save a couple of these little lanterns when they start ripening and keep them for seeds next year because I only got a few of these seeds and I'm going to keep them because I think they're, you know, I, I haven't looked them up but I think they're quite expensive seeds. Uh, right. The Bellotti beans, right. <laughs> when I went to go and look for the rocket, 
I looked at the bolotti bean packet and it did say that you can either eat the bolotti beans when they're green in the pods or save them and they will turn the pinky colour and you then dry the beans which are then white so that is what's going on with the bolotti beans we've got a few peas I don't think we're going to have many peas because I think I sowed them a bit too late this poor little plant here is falling over these still haven't flowered whatever they are um, I will go in here and sort this plant these plants out because we do have some radish down there which I'm not sure if they're alright uh, yeah I will go and f go through this and I might take off yeah because if you look here you know, look these bolotti beans are starting to change colour so they'll be white so you keep them for dried beans and then the smaller beans you can eat for for, and they're dwarf so they don't grow much bigger than this so they're dwarf bolotti beans I did read that I think these are done so these are the chocolate tomatoes yeah I think these are done these are done I'll take them off right I'll do that today so I'm going to harvest some of them and then I will look through the peppers I'm not sure what's going on with the peppers I can see lots of flowers um, I'm not sure about these carrots what's going on with these uh, I think these French beans are I don't know what's going on with the French beans I can't I did harvest them the other day so I don't know if I've taken off all the beans I don't know some more beans growing here so still some French beans to go oh yeah there's a couple here there's some here right so the French beans aren't done yet we'll keep those for another round I can see me having a massive clearing up session soon Right, these tomatoes are all going mental. They're all growing really, really, really big. As are these here. Yeah, they're all getting massive. I can't see any flowers on these ones. Well, they better hurry up because it's going to be the end of season soon. They just all die. Well, there's some flowers there, but they've gone really big. Not sure what's happening with the aubergines at the back. I don't know. The peppers at the front are still got flowers on. I haven't really examined them. I can't see many peppers. Oh, I can see a couple. I don't know. Anyway, so we've got flowers on the aubergines. They're beautiful. Really unusual. So, oh, look, we've got tiny melons growing on this plant. Look at those. Oh, aren't they cute? Oh, they're so fuzzy. Oh, fuzzy melons. Oh, well, if I only get a couple of melons, I'll be happy with all the melon plants that I've got. Um, oh, yeah, the courgettes. Not sure what's happening with those. They're still flowering. We're still getting flowers. Male flowers. Male flowers. Male flowers. Oh, there's a couple of courgettes. I did notice that we did get a mouse coming in to eat them. So I don't know if we're going to get many now. I might take them off while they're really small. Yeah, this plant's starting to go over, but it's having another bash. Not finished yet. Still got flowers. Won't take, won't do anything yet. Oh, we've got a couple of courgettes in here. I don't know if I want to keep them on the plant for very long because they might get eaten by a mouse. <laughs> this one here, what's going on with you? Oh yeah, it's got some flowers on. Oh, that one. That looks like one. So we'll just leave them until they're ready to die, until they're finished. The celery's looking good. We're getting flowers on these ones. We've got flowers on melons there. Right, now what to do today is sort out this tomato here, which I might just cut down. I can't see any flowers on it. We do have all of these beef tomatoes here. Can't see any tomatoes. I don't know, some of them were really late. The cucumber melons. 
<laughs> they're growing are these tiny little things look, look how little these are that's cute and I do have several of these plants as you've seen I've got some more brassicas on the table here which I need to get out in the garden um, and my leeks I don't know what's going on with them I might just pull them and keep them in the freezer as small leeks I think I will and I need to pull out these carrots because um, they've been in there for months now and I've got no idea they do not look like carrots so I did pull one the other day and it did not look like a carrot so I don't know very weird not grown the way you expect a carrot do need to weed this I think I've said this in a previous video these fissilis are still growing like the ones over there uh, not sure what that is on there oh hello they're changing at the top looking different isn't that fascinating growing all these unusual plants and the strawberries are doing well they're still growing sending out runners this cucumber melon here is looking good i'm going to harvest the rest of the chives in here so we've got a bit of harvesting to do i want to harvest some more of the sage the mint uh parsley i just realized i haven't got any coriander yeah. yeah i need to harvest some of these things these herbs yeah this sage here needs harvesting i cut lumps off and i just put it in the freezer and then if i need any herbs i just take them out it's really simple and then that way i've got fresh herbs all year well frozen fresh herbs and the hanging baskets are looking good anyway so that's it for now so i'll show you later i might do a video of me doing the garden i don't know yet or i might just show you like this is before and then after it depends because if my partner comes down in a minute um we might go off and do the wood so i might this might be the only bit of garden that i'm going to do today so um i'm going to sow some more rocket in this patch here again and see if it grows so we're going to do it again and again and again and again until it grows again hello sue here again from sue's dog my dog of my garden today and i just want to show you what i've been up to in the polytunnel for the last few hours so i've been tidying it up quite a lot um and i've been harvesting a few things sorry I've, my hair is really messy because i kept catching everything in my hair so I'll just need to take the watering can off there. So I've been tidying up a lot of the stuff in the polytunnel. I've still got a bit more tidying up to do, which I'll do tomorrow. Um, but I just want to show you what I've harvested and what I've done. Okay, so I'll just turn the camera around. So today I've harvested all this rhubarb here. So I haven't taken the top leaves off yet. I will go and put them on the compost bin. But I've harvested this rhubarb here. Um, and over here in this section I just need to put this flower in this section I think for a minute <sighs> okay so today I've tidied up all of this corner um, I really needed to sort the tomatoes out because they were all falling over and they've gone really big and I've thinned them all out so that they've just got the flowers mainly so I took off a lot of the leaves and had to sort out the um, cucumber melon in the corner there. Uh, yeah, so I've tidied all this up. You see that? We've got a melon growing there, look. You see that? There's a melon. So, yeah, I just need to take a dead leaf off of that plant there. Hold on. I, I love taking the dead leaves off because um, they make the plants look manky. And I don't think it's good to have dead leaves on them because it encourages pests. So I always go around and cut all the leaves off. So in the middle section, I've tidied up all of this. I can see that I've missed a few leaves down here. I'll just take that off there. 
I can't without my scissors because of where my thumb nail is coming off and there's new nail underneath I can't push on it now so I have to use my scissors every time I need to do something oh this is just falling over I've noticed so I've tidied up all the wait a minute sweet peas are falling over right just get back in there will you get back in there I tell you, using sweet peas as a trellis is a really good idea because they've got really, really strong stems. And um, all my plants like hanging off them. So they're really good for to intermingle with the tomatoes and things. Um, so these two cucumbers here, I've hooked over this hook. Um, they were growing over it anyway, but I accidentally knocked it down. Um, so I've hooked them over there and we've still got a massive cucumber here that's grown before my very eyes I think that one's actually ready and so I've tidied up the whole of this middle section now and I've taken out a lot of the leaves off of the courgettes um, and just scraped it over with a little fork and I've also harvested in this bed all of the leeks that I had growing they're only small leeks but uh, small leeks is better than no leeks and I only had a few of these tiny little carrots that grew but I've ha harvested them so tomorrow um, I will chop all these up and freeze them so that's what I'm going to do with those and then we can use them in soup and stuff when we need some vegetables so I've got so this is all neat and tidy now, all cleaned out and now this side of the bed is all tidy now so we're ready to put in some other things and then this bed i've tidied up all the courgettes i've still got some few red tomatoes to take off and i've tidied up all the tomatoes and taken out a lot of the dead leaves and reducing the size of them and stuff like that oh wait a minute i'm just trying to cook that one over there i must have disturbed these when i was um doing the other side of them so I've tried not to knock off any of the tomatoes while I was clearing it up. So tomorrow's mission is if uh, um, I'm going to take off the rest of these beans. I've tidied up the beans. We'll see if we get another flourish of beans. I've taken off all the dead uh, leaves off the beans so we can see the beans properly now. There's still tons of them at the top here. Um, but tomorrow's mission, I think, will be to tidy up this aubergine stroke pepper bed um, and sort out the calendula which are growing there. I want to keep them because I'm trying to gather the seeds of them. And next year I want to keep all the seeds of my calendula and plant them outside. Um, just need to check out that aubergine there. Um, yeah, and tomorrow I'm just going to go through these tomatoes again. That are growing in these bags maybe take out some more leaves and give them a thin in thin out these ones again i'm not sure why this plant is yellow i know why it's because oh, i don't know why actually let's just forget about that and then i'll tidy up this bed as well which is another pepper bed and this has some carrots in so i'm going to check to see if the carrots are done and then what we want to do is go into this bed and just see if the radish are done and see about the bellotti beans um, and we're going to harvest these chocolate tomatoes because they're done now yeah there's some up there some there some there and once they're done um, there's one more lot up there i don't know if they're going to come to fruitation i'll take these ones off to give those I don't know what plant pot that's growing in. Anyway, I'll have a look tomorrow and I'll sort out the tomatoes over there. And just now, just this very minute, I was sorting out these tomatoes. They've got quite a lot of tomatoes on. I don't want to knock them off. And so I sorted out the tomatoes and the melon at the back. So we've got some more melons. There's two melons in that bag. So I've restrung them up um this tomato i'm going to leave that's sort of leaning down here it's all right and then i just harvested some of the 
rhubarb i leave them ones for another day um which took the pressure off of the melons because the leaves were actually swamping the melons um so now they're quite happy there's quite a lot of flowers on those oh this tomato is just giving me hit me in the mush um yeah so it's all looking really good we've got quite a few tomatoes everywhere and then i just tidied up this bed which was really messy the tomatoes had all collapsed onto the bed and a lot of the melons hadn't gone up the string so now tidying i think there's only two or three melons in here i think there's three uh so i've tied up these melons to the strings and the tomatoes as well so they've all got their own strings and uh, the melons are quite tall as are the tomatoes this one was completely laying on the ground oh and i want to show you what i just did so this tomato plant here was laying right on the ground and i pulled it up and as i pulled it up it bent this the, the stem but because it's got all the tomatoes on it look I don't really want to look and here so at the moment I've done a quick mending job with the old with the tube that was left from my string I'd nearly ended the string and I've made like a splint so and I've tied it up quite tight to this string so that it pulls it straight kind of thing if you know what I mean um, so it's got no weight on it because um, I need it to be all right that one because it's got quite a lot of tomatoes still to ripen and become tomatoes on there so we'll see if that works over the next few days my little splint on my tomato plant i hope so <laughs> i don't want to lose any because they've spent all this time growing got to this massive size you know they're really big now i mean they're taller than me and uh, i don't want to lose them so i just wanted to show you that so I've done so much today, so I'm going to take some photos of my rhubarb and my produce inside my trog, which I just brought up, um, and I'll just put them at the end of the video. So I'm just picking up my kneeling cushion that my son gave me for Christmas, actually. It was a Christmas present. I just got it the other day when I went to visit him in London. And, yeah, so I'll put that up there. And I've got my trog here. So I'm going to use the big one today because we're going to put the rhubarb in and we're going to put the leeks in so they're all really long so I'm going to um, use the big trog today trug, trog, whatever trug I think you call it anyway I'll just pop it down this end and pop it outside actually so I can lay the things in because I've got to take the leaves off of the rhubarb first so it's been oh I just want to show you the clouds that form in the hills when it's been raining it's absolutely beautiful so i just want to say goodbye so anyway i hope you like my videos and i hope i can give you some kind of knowledge well i haven't got any knowledge i'm just learning on my feet um and we're just doing our garden and we're just growing stuff in our polytunnel it's all just a giant experiment and if there's any hints and tips you can give me about how to grow things um just let me know i'm i'm up for learning stuff because with my tomatoes i'm just leaving them to get to grow i've taken out side shoots and stuff like that but they still seem to get really 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 tall um but you know i'm, I'm up for learning so if anybody's got some hints and tips for me about growing tomatoes or brassicas in general when you don't want to use um, slug pellets and stuff like that. I want to try and grow things as natural as possible with, with using like like what I'm doing with the with the diagnosis. Uh, I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it. But you know, natural things. Um, repellents and stuff like that and preventions and intercropping with like mint and stuff and that kind of thing that's what i'm trying to do in my garden i don't want to use any kind of really nasty chemicals on my plants because there isn't any and i don't want to introduce any um so i love these melons oh they're so fluffy oh can you see that
they're all really soft. Most things are spiky when I touch them, but these are like really soft and lovely to touch, like a teddy bear. Sorry about that, I just got distracted by the, the baby melon sitting there right next to me. Anyway, I don't know if they're going to come to anything, the baby melons, by the way. I mean, you know, come next month, the frost to come, it could probably knock everything out that's in the polytunnel. I just noticed there's two big cucumbers behind my, my shovels. See that? There's shovels there. Where are we? Let's see that. If you can see it but behind them there's like two cucumbers hanging i didn't notice those till just then they're hiding behind my shovels i've got a few more cucumbers to go i'm really happy with the cucumbers by the way this method of just hanging them up on a piece of string don't take up any room whatsoever so i'll definitely be doing that again i definitely will be growing the french beans again in fact i'll do a rundown once this year ends of all the things that grew really well and the things that didn't grow well um you know there was quite a few crops that didn't really like it in the polytunnel which i'm definitely not growing the polytunnel again but there are other things that really thrive in the polytunnel so uh, like the tomatoes and thriving i mean you know they're really growing big in here but i'm not sure um yeah it's a bit like a jungle in here yeah anyway it's all just learning anyway please like and subscribe to my channel tell your friends and family about my channel and if there's any information that i'm giving you that's of any knowledge whatsoever i hope if i can just teach one person to do just get out there and try that's all i can say just try and just grow something it's such a wonderful feeling to grow things yourself I've created this whole area from this plastic bag that I'm standing in and grown just put seeds in and everything's just thrived and I'm just overwhelmed with the fact that I've grown all these plants that I'm now looking at and I'm so happy that I've been able to do this um, you know my partner you know built the thing with my help we both did it together but he'd done all the manual work I couldn't have done any of this without him <laughs> but I've actually put all the earth in, you know, the compost in and, and sowed the seeds and nurtured the plants to both our benefit. So I hope you enjoy this and thank you very much and I'll see you again soon in the next video. Bye for now. Bye.